Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's video, I want to explain the difference between the glute bridge and the hip thrust. A common question that I often get asked is what is the difference? And today I want to address that in this video. And I also want to explain some implications for people with low back pain when it comes to the glute bridge and the hip thrust and what exercise may be more appropriate for someone with flexion based issues. So to begin, the glute bridge involves lying on your back, your knees are bent, and all you're doing from here is popping your hips up, squeezing your butt, and then coming back down. Now, what I want you guys to pay attention to is the angle from my head to my hips here. And then as we come over to the hip thrust here, which involves being elevated, so our upper back may be on a bench or a box like this. Now, as you look at the angle from my head to my hips, it is different when compared to the glute bridge, as it's more of a straight line. Now, from this position here, we pop our hips up, squeeze our butt, and then come down. That is the hip thrust. Now, what is the primary difference between the two? The primary difference is the range of motion. So, the distance from our knees to our chest are much closer on the hip thrust compared to the glute bridge. Now, what that involves, or what that means, is that we're in a deeper position of hip flexion here, which means that we're traveling through more range of motion through the hip thrust when compared to the glute bridge. Now, what that does is that it's gonna put more tension on our muscles, making them work more because we're moving through a longer range of motion. But for someone with back pain, specifically flexion-based issues where they may have a disc bulge and pinch on a nerve root, this position can be uncomfortable just to get into because we're seated here, we have this deep hip flexion occurring and we might have a little bit of lumbar flexion occurring. And that may be enough to be to trigger symptoms in someone when setting up for the hip thrust. So that can be uncomfortable for someone with flexion based issues, especially as we load up with maybe a barbell or a dumbbell and then pop our hips up. So the glute bridge itself, more of a regression you could say to the hip thrust because now we have a straight line from our head to our hips here, and all we're doing is raising our hips off the floor. And we don't have any low back rounding occurring, or, or we don't have any setup position where we're seated and we have that flexion occurring in the low back. So that is the primary difference between the two is that the hip thrust involves moving through a greater range of motion, glute bridge, a little bit less range of motion. For someone with existing existing based back issues, specifically flexion based, hip thrust may not be a suitable exercise for that person. And they may be better off with a glute bridge or different glute bridge variation exercises. And then maybe as they progress, they can move up to the hip thrust as they are symptom free. So just a few thoughts I wanted to, to share with you guys. It's a, it's a question I often get asked, what is the difference between glute bridge and hip thrust? It's just hip thrust is a progression in terms of the range of motion you're moving through. It's the same motion, but that is the primary difference in some with back issues, glute bridge may be more suitable for them. Okay guys, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. All the best. Take care.